Hello. So uh, it is my pleasure to give a keynote speech on a very interesting project um, about NGO performance and financial misinformation. This is a paper uh, uh, joined with Julia Owens and Runel Berger, and we are looking at providing some empirical evidence to show that better performing NGOs are more likely to report their financial data more accurately. And we'll be using data from uh, the Ugandan NGO sector to uh, support our claim. Uh, this paper has been published um, and you can you can have a look at uh, the uh, the published paper uh, on uh, this link. We're very, I'm, I'm very pleased to be able to talk about this paper because I believe that it is contributing to the overall theme of the conference. Now, why should we care about NTOs? They have become the main providers for key public services in developed countries. And in many developing countries, NGOs are the main uh, channels through which uh, international donors can deliver aid to the uh, recipi uh, recipients. However, the problem with the NGO sector has always been the few regulatory mechanisms to oversee and regulate uh, their activities. Uh, with the current uh, global uh, crisis of trust and credibility, there has been a huge uh, call from the public uh, to increase the transparency and accountability of uh, the NGO sector. One of the key problem with um, the call for that increase in accountability is that um, measuring or evaluating the impact created by the NGOs or charities has always been a challenge. How can we really measure uh, their um, uh, impact? How can we evaluate their performance? Usually there would be two ways to do it. Either we'll be looking at some surveys of the beneficiaries, right? We go out and then ask uh, the recipients to evaluate uh, the services and activities of the NGOs. The second way that we can do it is to collect, which is very much uh, uh, cheaper, is to collect some self-reported information from the NGOs. And we, as, as, as we can imagine, um, there are many issues associated with either of the methods. Now, if we go and do a survey with the beneficiaries, we're actually asking the recipients to evaluate the quality, the performance of the um, uh, organization. However, doing that is very, pretty much very, very costly, not just about monetary uh, value, but also time and efforts. Uh, asking directly the NGO to self-report is easier, is cheaper. However, uh, we, we in many cases, it's very hard to interpret what they actually report. There would be uh, a difficult, uh, it is going to be very difficult to, um, to regulate the way that the NGOs are going to report uh, their, their actual impact, right? So we have to be uh, cautious about interpret, interpreting uh, their uh, reporting. Now, in this paper, what, what, what we are going to do is to look at a some potential link connection between the two ways of evaluating an NGO. We try to, to ask the following question, we're trying to answer the following question. If NGOs who provide highly satisf satisfying uh, services, so th for those NGOs who are evaluated by the beneficiaries, uh, to have done the job better, how much are they going to perform in terms of financial accountability? The, simply, the, the simple question is, do perf better performing NGOs report their financial data uh, more accurately? So we're trying to see the connection between the self-reports uh, data and the survey data from uh, their beneficiaries. Um, so... Um, we are choosing the uh, Ugandan NGO sector as uh, our case study because of its rapid uh, growth over the last uh, uh, decades. Uh, it, uh, we have been able to collect this uh, unique representative data set 
to 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 analyze uh, uh, the uh, the whole uh, Ugandan sector. Even though the sample size is pretty small, uh, we will be able to do some uh, interesting uh, analysis uh, with it. Uh, with the um, with the breadth of our uh, questionnaire surveys, uh, we will be able to distinguish uh, the differences between full and partial disclosure of the NGOs regarding their financial information. We would, be a, we would be able to match our data set with a second uh, instrument uh, of uh, uh, participant surveys, so, so the beneficiary surveys, uh, to independently evaluate the performance of the NGOs. So the key contribution of our uh, data set is that we would be able to, to have uh, an, an overlook, uh, an, an overall view of the two methods, and we will be able to link them together to see the connection. In order to measure uh, their tendency to misreport uh, the financial data, we're going to use uh, Benford's law, a mathematical uh, phenomenon uh, to identify the uh, potential misreporting of financial information. Uh, we'll be able to use the participant survey to uh, identify the better performing NGOs by looking at uh, their uh, evaluated performance. And we show that empirically, uh, conditioning on fully disclosing their financial information, uh, NGOs with a higher satisfaction uh, score would report uh, financial data more accurately. So better performing NGOs if, uh, independently independently evaluated by their recipients would be reporting financial data more accurately. We are going to look at the tendency for the full disclosure as well. And we are seeing that the more organized NGO, uh, the best, uh, the, the better staffed the, the NGOs, uh, the more likely that they would be fully disclosing their financial reports. And we are trying to see whether the intention to uh, financially misrepresent um, uh, the, the data would be correlated with the, the, the tendency to disclose the data or not. And we found no uh, evidence to support that hypothesis. Um, so I will be talking about the set of the survey, our empirical strategy, the results, and some uh, takeaway uh, messages. Now, we, for the data, we are going to use a representative uh, sample of the whole Ugandan NGOs collected in uh, 2008, 2007 uh, from the World Bank. Um, the, the NGO survey was done uh, jointly with the Ugandan government. So we had a very good coverage of the whole uh, NGO sector in uh, Uganda. So in the data, we, we, we talk in the data collection phase, we talked to um, the NGO managers or representatives to collect some standard uh, financial figures, for example, the revenues uh, and their uh, expenses. We also run another uh, focus group uh, interviews with uh, some villages who have got who, who had uh, got uh, support from the NGOs. Uh, so we try to select uh, from 10 to 20 participants uh, by the village uh, leaders uh, to participate in our focus groups. We in 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 one of the interviews we ask the uh, the uh, the villagers to to give their satisfaction about the N the NGOs from one to five. So rating, evaluate uh, how how much uh, satisfied uh, the village has been uh, about the NGOs uh, performance. The NGO would never know about the process or involved in the selection of the villages or the focus groups. So we're trying to keep uh, some uh, anonymity between the, the, the focus group selection and at the NGOs to make sure that we have some objective evaluation of the NGO itself. We then match uh, NGO, uh, the NGO survey and the focus group data to have a one-to-one -one, uh, uh, matched uh, data set. After cleaning, we have 104 
uh, NGO village uh, observations available for the analysis. Now, um, so during the uh, interview with the NGOs, uh, they are presented a few options. So uh, we're trying to get the, uh, we're trying to provide the NGOs as much opportunities for them to fully disclose their financial uh, situation uh, to us as possible. Okay, so we either uh, ask them uh, before uh, the interview started so they could have some time to prepare the financial data or we would give Ooh, sorry, we would leave the um, uh, um, the information for them to fill and to uh, report it back to us after the interview. So we try our best to really give uh, the NGOs every chance to give us uh, information um, um, uh, regarding their financial uh, situation. And remember that uh, our survey has uh, was. Uh, uh, a collaboration between the World Bank and uh, the Ugandan NGO, so the the, uh, the Ugandan governments. So we did have some authority over um, um, asking and requesting the financial data uh, of the uh, NGOs. Um, so for NGOs who provide who provided um, all of the requested information, so we we got those. Uh, pieces of information from 77 NGOs. We will try to evaluate how accurate, how potential, how 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 accurate uh, and, uh, the financial information is for these uh, uh, NGOs. For those who only provided us uh, incomplete information, so there would be some missing values uh, here and there that um, uh, the NGOs uh, refused to give us. So we 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 did not treat any zero values as missing variables, but we we we, we classified incomplete information by uh, by by uh, whether the NGO refused to to give the information uh, to us. So we we're trying to see, trying to to analyze whether uh, uh, not giving uh, the full uh, in, um, information was a strategic. Uh, decision of uh, the NGO, or it's just simply there's no information available to report. So, for example, they didn't have the funding, they didn't have the accounting uh, capacity to uh, collect and to report the information uh, to us. So we're trying to answer this question in the second part of the uh, paper. So our first question is uh, simply to look at whether uh, better performing NGOs would uh, improve the uh, quality of their financial data. Okay, uh, there has been some. Uh, 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 there would be some. Uh, there has been some theoretical uh, papers on this already. So, for example, better performers would, uh, you know, voluntarily uh, disclose uh, better and more to signal their competency. Right, so um, they would be very much happily uh, announcing to the world that they are doing very well if they are uh, performing well, right? Um, however, uh, in terms of NGOs who have uh, this uh, trade-off between spending on charitable activities or spending on uh, you know accounting activities to to keep their um, um uh, accounting numbers accounting information clear and and, and ready to report uh, they would have to choose right so for example if they they spend more uh, um, money on uh, missions then they would have less money on bookkeeping activities or um, in uh, on uh, accountants so that perhaps the data are a little bit uh, less uh, accurate uh, and of course, um, um, NGOs, they would have incentives to overstate or understate their financial figures as well. So uh, there is pretty much a little evidence to see whether uh, better performers would report more accurately in the uh, developing world. And our paper will be trying to address this gap in the literature. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to use uh, the uh, focus group uh, from the villages 
survey to evaluate uh, the performance of the NGO. And then we're trying to measure the accuracy of the information reported by the NGO using their self-reported uh, financial data. And we ask the question of whether NGOs who performing who 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 the NGOs who are performing better would report more accurately. Okay. And in the second part of um the uh, paper will be looking to to answer the question of whether uh, NGOs who partly uh, disclose uh, during the interviews would they why 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 did they do that is it because they have something to hide or is it because uh, they do not have the information to actually to actually report to us okay so how can we uh, uh, do it so there are three challenges, and I will be going through uh, all of these uh, challenges and how we address them to answer the questions. The first challenge is how can we measure for the accuracy of financial data? Okay, well, again, we are going to use this uh, phenomenon, mathematical phenomenon uh, called uh, Benford's law to measure uh, information accuracy. Okay, so basically the, the key idea is that uh, the first digits of all of the numbers in an accounting, economic, or financial uh, data set that, are, that is free of errors or human manipulation should follow a decreasing distribution. And we call this dis decreasing distribution uh, the, Benford's, uh, the Benford's distribution. So this has been applied in, in a few cases. So, for example, to check the, the tax avoidance, some, some election results, and some national statistics. Uh, experimental evidence has uh, shown that it is a very hard, uh, it's very hard to forge to replicate a distributional property of financial data. Okay, so uh, it's, 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 uh, so, so we, we expect that uh, any deviation from this law, from this distribution, would be some indication of uh, financial um, uh, inaccuracy. Okay, there are a few conditions for the data set, and we have checked it in our data. For example, there must be no built-in uh, maximum and minimum. This is true because the data are purely financial data. So uh, they can get as many as much uh, money as they could, and they can spend as much money as uh, they, they 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 wish. Right? There should be no externally assigned values. This is correct as well because um, these uh, numbers are coming from different revenue uh, sources and would be spent on different uh, sources of. Uh, uh, expenses. So there, there, sh there shouldn't be any externally assigned values. We we, we also checked whether uh, the the data uh, is uh, persist uh, is 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 uh, positively uh, skewed, meaning that we have to check whether the median of the data is smaller than the mean, and and this is correct for 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 our data. And we should have about hundred or hundred and ten data points for each NGO. So for each NGO, we need to have 110 or 100 uh, financial uh, figures, non-zero financial figures to perform the test. We'll be relaxing this uh, later on to uh, to make sure that uh, we have some robust uh, results. So this is one example of the data. So for so the green line is the theoretical distribution that we should expect. So this is the uh, Benford's distribution. As you can see, uh, the first digit would be uh, one uh, for about 31% of the time. The first digit would be two for around 17, 16% of the time and so on. And if we look at all of the, uh, the NGO uh, at once, we can see that, um, we can see that um, the data pretty much follows the Benford's distribution, right? So as you can see, uh, number one appearing as the first digit uh, the most frequently, uh, following by number two, and so on. Now, for um, a deviating uh, NGO in panel B, as you can see, um, uh, the observed uh, distribution uh, in the bar, in the blue bar, 
it's not following the Benford distribution, right? So for example, uh, even though um, a digit number one appearing at the first digit, uh, the most frequently uh, number eight is the second most uh, frequently appearing uh, as a digit um, in this uh, for this NGO. And we will be looking at this NGO and we're saying that uh, this NGO has potentially misreported the financial data, right? For a conforming data NGO, meaning that we we do not have any uh, evidence to suggest that they have reported uh, their data. As you can see, uh, the uh, observed the observed uh, frequency actually follows the uh, Benford's distribution pretty well, right? Even though we have a little bit deviation from uh, seven uh, digit seven and eight, they are still within the uh, uh, the pattern. Okay, so this is the key idea behind our measure of uh, information accuracy. So we try to measure the uh, the accuracy of the NGOs by uh, the convergence towards the Benford's distribution. So basically, we're looking at the similarity uh, index between the uh, observed distribution and the Benford's distribution. Okay, and we show that. 26% uh, of uh, these NGOs actually failed the Benford test. The Benford test uh, hypothesis is whether the, the, the observed distribution is the same as the Benford distribution. And be, uh, if, if we fail to, re, to, to, to uh, so if we, if we rejected the null hypothesis, uh, we claimed that uh, these NGOs are deviating from the benefit distribution. So we have some uh, empirical evidence that they are not uh, reporting the data accurately. Uh, we have run um, another test on the British charities and we found pretty much the same uh, proportion. So it is something of a global phenomenon in our opinion, okay? For those NGOs who didn't report the data, so we, we could not run the Benford's test on uh, the accuracy of those NGOs would be simply zero, okay? So they would be either zero or missing. So we have to really decide on whether we should assign the value for these uh, NGOs who did not provide uh, complete information, zero, meaning that mm, not, not accurate, or missing, meaning that uh, simply because we do not have information on them. Okay, it is entirely depending on the uh, the the, uh, the the nature of the missing information, isn't it? Uh, we will be addressing this in the second part of the uh, paper. Now, of course, uh, when we run the OLS on the full sample, meaning that we're checking whether the the evaluated performance or the uh, the the uh, 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 performance uh, values from the focus groups from the villages. And the measure of reporting accuracy, as you can see, we are looking at a positive uh, correlation between them. So the better performing NGOs do report more accurately, okay? Um, now, before we move on to analyze the data, we really look, have to look at um, the mechanism, the nature of the selection into providing incomplete information, right? Uh, uh, so that we can uh, analyze how accurate the information is and how we can assign the values for the accuracy index uh, indices for these NGOs. Now, they might not provide all of the requested information for two reasons, right? So either because uh, they have some strategic cost, so they have information, but they decide not to report it, right? So... This is the problem of in incidentally uh, truncated distribution. So basically the OLS will be biased because uh, the data has been sampley selected to um, withhold some information, okay? Uh, so we should uh, assign uh, the accuracy indices as missing. So we cannot get, get them a zero uh, accurate uh, information. Right, uh, we should use a Heckman correction model type model for this. Uh, if the reason why they didn't have they didn't report the data is simply because they have nothing to report, 
they don't have the information. So they even they do not have an accurate uh, picture of their financial uh, situation. Then the data that they're giving us is completely inaccurate. Okay, so we can uh, assign uh, an accuracy level of zero. Okay, if that's the case, we can be simply using the Tobit model uh, or the CAX uh, double hurdle model to to analyze uh, these uh, situations, and then to see which one is the main mechanism behind behind uh, incomplete information, we can run a test to to see which uh, uh, model fits the data better. Right, so that is going to be the key idea behind uh, our method. So this is the uh, Hackman uh, correction model in which we having we are having two stages. Uh, in the first stage, uh, the the NGO decide whether to um, to uh, to give us the, the full set of information, and then they decide how much accurate they would give us. Right, how, the, how much accurate of the information uh, that they will be giving us, right? Um, uh, a few technical details here. So if uh, we have um, this as uh, the Hackman correction model, then we have to assume that the correlation, uh, there would be no correlation between the error term in the first stage and the error term in the second stage. So meaning that the decision uh, to fully disclose would be uncorrelated with the decision of the accuracy level uh, if they uh, fully disclose, right? Uh, if uh, they do not disclose simply because they do not have the information, uh, the assumption would be the decision to disclose, fully disclose or not, would be independent of the decision to accurately report the data or not, okay? So those are the technicality behind uh, the test. Uh, in order to, to run the estimation, we need to have some exclusion restriction and we choose uh, the following variables of whether members have to vote for new activities. We believe that this is uh, something easily, something that can be easily uh, ver verified and something that shouldn't be uh, affecting the true uh, tendency to, to report the, accurate, uh, the, the financial data to us or not. Okay, um, so this is going to be our... Uh, uh, exclusion restriction. And then we will be using two tests to distinguish between uh, the two models to see which model is better. We'll be using Wern's 1989 and a very recently developed model by Silva et al. to uh, 20, 2015 to distinguish between the models. And we show that uh, cracked uh, cracked is the preferred specification by using the two uh, more methods. That is, uh, the decision to uh, report fully or not is independent of the decision to report the data inaccurately or accurately. Okay. Uh, we also are trying to relax the assumptions about the distribution of the data by running the non and semi uh, parametric uh, models as well. Uh, and we had uh, pretty much the same result. OK, now, a third challenge for us is whether we can actually uh, look at the uh, uh, causality behind our analysis. So whether the uh, evaluation was endogenous uh, to the level of financial data accuracy. Um, so, for example, transparent NGOs, they would be um, inherently better in terms of uh, helping the villages so they would get a high ev evaluation anyway. Um, uh, so the NGO self-commitments would affect both the evaluation and the accuracy. So we have this problem of operative rubber bias, right? To do it, we would exploit some exogenous variations in the evaluation by the characteristics of the villages who participated uh, into the uh, focus group. Remember that. Uh, these villages were chosen randomly by the village uh, 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 leaders without the knowledge of the NGO. So we hope that the characteristics about these NGOs, uh, sorry, the characteristics of these uh, focus group participants would, 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 would be uh, creating some uh, variation in the uh, evaluation. And we use that to, to, to explain our 
uh, information accuracy. So we show that um, um, uh, the in the first stage, we have very strong first stage. So we are pretty happy with the results. And uh, the exclusion restriction seems to hold as well. Uh, we have a few tests here. I'm going to leave it for uh, the, uh, the audience if they are interested uh, to, to have a look uh, at uh, our paper. And for the second stage, we have the same result for uh, Hackman's or Kratz uh, using an IV. That is a higher, a better NGO would ha have a higher uh, financial uh, accuracy. Right, so we have a very consistent, very robust result uh, wherever uh, it is um, um, uh, without or, or with uh, an, an, an IV uh, strategy. Okay, uh, for the test between Cracks and Hackman's, again, we uh, prefer we prefer the Cracks model uh, in in uh, by using the Wurm test and also by using the uh, silver test, okay? So we all uh, get this as the best one, as the better one, okay? Uh, this is a um, uh, slide on the semi-parametric, so we all, uh, all see this uh, positive relationship between the two uh, evaluation, uh, between the two indices, so the evaluated performance and the measure of uh, accuracy. So we, we, we can see this by using semi parametric estimates as well. And non-parametric, we have the same results. So we see a positive relationship, okay? So to summarize, the takeaway message here is very simple. NGOs who provide uh, better services evaluated by their beneficiaries also report financial information more accurately. We have uh, also, we have some empirical evidence to show that the tendency to misreport is not correlated with their tendency to fully report the information. Okay, so the decision for a full disclo disclosure is uncorrelated with the tendency to uh, financial inaccuracy. We also advocate the use of Benford's law as a way to uh, check for the accuracy of financial data. And we hope that if there is some financial oversight, it is going to be some potential substitute to some regulatory mechanisms. Uh, and this is pretty much it. Uh, thanks very much for your attention. Thank you.